Good morning. I know I said we were going to Russia today, but I've changed my mind and want to do something that's a little more fun. Um, there's the, the Russian gun, and we'll get to that tomorrow. What I want to do is I want to talk today about the Flaubert. This is the Flaubert. Back here so you can see. The Flaubert was called the parlor rifle, the saloon rifle, and the boy's rifle. This is one of those that you would give to your boy when he came of age at the time, like 12 years old or so, and tell him to go to the woods and, and don't shoot anybody. Similar to the way people do that with uh, 22s now. And uh, all I can say about giving a, a young boy uh, who's 10 years old or 12 years old a 22 and telling him to go to the woods and not shoot anything is uh, he's one lucky boy. I wish something like that had happened to me. But I lived in the city and we, we didn't have anything like that, but I, I wish we had. So anyway, the Flaubert, this one is in 22. They made them in a bunch of various small, um, small calibers because they were designed to be shot inside. That was the idea, was that after dinner, you would get together and take your Flaubert and you'd go down into your basement somewhere if you had room and shoot. Because the cartridge itself, this is not the actual cartridge, this is one that's made today, is actually was just a uh, the firing cap. And what they did, he did, was he put some lead on top of it and used the charge from the actual mechanism, the, the, the firing mechanism, to fire his projectile as opposed to using gunpowder. And that's what this is. It's basically, it's a, a 22 with... A piece of little piece of lead on top of it and that's what's used uh, I can I make my own with, uh, with 22 LR and I just dump the gunpowder out and put a BB on it and and it works just as well now it's the whole idea of the Flaubert was it was the first real rimfire gun that was out he's the one that developed the rimfire using as I said the uh, the the cap in the oh, what we have today and then was the center fire you can see the the firing pin my uh, firing cap in the middle firing pin hits it boom it goes boom whereas this has none the actual blasting part is in the rim of is in the rim of the cartridge so that when the hammer comes over Well, this one doesn't have, but it'll hit the edge of the of the cartridge and cause the uh, gunpowder to detonate and, and, and go. So they came in various uh, calibers over the years where you could get uh, rimfire um, 30 caliber, uh, 32, 38, especially for pistols. They had them in like the 38 and 32 uh, rimfire pistols. Uh, the idea was that it's one cartridge that you can't, nothing will get wet on it, um, you know, that it's weatherproof, and and it, it, it worked great. Uh, don't buy a 32 rimfire, because the ammunition is very, very expensive for that, so that would be my recommendation anyway. So the way that this was actually um, loaded was, you would take it and you'd pull it back to half cock, they call this the rolling block, and I'm not sure exactly what I see rolling, but it's what they call the rolling block. You have this little thing that goes down like that. You take your cartridge, and you slide your cartridge in, and you close your little door. On the little door, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's a little pin right there that will re that's resting on the edge of that cartridge. So that when you pull it back to full cock, and then you fire it, it hits the, the, the rim of the rim fire and causes it to, to go. Anyway, it's not the highest quality gun. So, so anyway, so there's the, the Flaubert. The FN, the uh, Fabrica Nationale, well, was making these guns and making the military guns um, prior to World War One, the Germans were the ones that were 
actually uh, building all the Mausers and exporting all the Mausers all over the world. I have a Brazilian contract Mauser uh, that was made by the Germans and um, it's been sitting at the gunsmiths now for about six months waiting to have a barrel changed out because they, somebody had cut the barrel. So I was putting a, a uh, full-size barrel on it so I could make it look like it was originally meant to look. Um, we'll get, hopefully by the time we get to that area that we'll have the uh, Brazilian Mauser will be back. So uh, when World War One was ramping up and World War One was going on, the Germans really couldn't uh, export Mausers anymore. And certain things happened. The Chinese decided to build their own, and they copied the 1907 and built their own Mauser. We'll get to that. I guess I'm divert. I'm kind of working my way into uh, the Mausers. Um, but what happened was the Belgians took over the Mauser production, especially after World War II, and they started producing uh, Mausers to transport around the world. I do have a contract Mauser right there that's a 1930 um, Greek Mauser they one that they had sold to the Greek that has a, an interesting story that goes behind it too uh, so the, um, the the Belgians eventually the FN company in 1970 was bought out by Herstel uh, group the Herstel group so now it's FN Herstel and you'll see that if you google them you'll see the the target rifles and the hunting rifles and and military rifles that they're putting out are just amazing. They're making them around the world, uh, Japan and Germany and the United States and and uh, two U.S. Comp what I thought were U.S. companies. Uh, Browning is uh, owned by F.N. Herstel, and of all people, Winchester is owned by F.N. Herstel. So Winchester rifle is owned by a, a Belgian company, uh, which is why at one point, and we'll get to it when we do the uh, the uh, the Winchesters that Winchesters were made in Japan and God help us Winchesters made in Japan and uh, so that's that's where we're sitting with the Flaubert the parlor rifle the rifle you shoot in your house and and uh, it's got an octagon barrel and that's about it it's a fun little gun to shoot uh, my wife's garden stuff has some dents in it from it, but um, you got to shoot something. So anyway, that's that's the the flow bear.